let's kick it off as we go live. All right. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We have so many participants today that I'm excited to share this time and space with you. Uh, my name is Becca Lins, Weha Success Coach. I have been connected to Sweetha for just a little over a decade. Feel blessed to have been in many positions, especially the seat of the student to begin, right? As an employee, we're all encouraged to um, take life coaching as a program so that we can better seek to understand, ask all the powerful questions um, and lead with love. So my name is Becca. I'm here to host with you and all of the webinar participants. Please do raise your hand. Let us know where you are. Um, and yes, okay, chat is disabled there. I see, but raise your hand and I'll unmute you um, as we go through to ask the questions. So let me go ahead and introduce the lady of the hour, Tristan Reese. Hello, Tristan. How are you? Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give us the rundown. Um, how long have you been with Sweeha? What do you do there as a career, like for you at Sweeha, but also what you're doing with education that you've taken there? Well, um, how much time do we have? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I've been at Sweeha about eight and a half years now, um, worked in admissions the entire time I've been here. So I've, uh, Becca's worn many hats here at Sweeha. I've only worn really two. I've been an admissions coach and then I'm the director of admissions. So I've been the director of admissions for a few years now, um, or I guess almost five years. Is that right? Uh, yeah. It flies when you're having fun, baby. So um, yeah. uh, let's see. I have taken probably close to 1500 hours of classes. I'm a graduate of our yoga program on campus. Um, taught many yoga classes all over the valley, had my own business, clients, et cetera, et cetera. So I know the drill from being a student all the way, you know, the enrollment process, the being, a, uh, having the process in class, learning the skill sets, and then most importantly, putting them into action after you graduate, or even maybe even before you graduate. So Yes, I'm excited. I love my job um, and I love helping people uncover what it is that they would de uh, describe as their gift and help them figure out how do I take this out into the world, not only, only in a loving way, but a profitable way, because let's be real, hugs hmm. and gratitude don't pay our bills. Okay. So <laughs> we got to make it profitable. Gosh, Groceries darn it. I'm going to buy wait when that happens. Right? Yes. I love it. Way to state our mission. We just right. slide that in there. Um, Girl. so, you know, we, y'all, you all are here for, um, a reason, your own passion, maybe your own pain has led you to the healing realm and you want to hold space for others to, um, to do the same. And I love this word, it's funny how as you evolve, words have like different meanings, even though there's technically one definition, it's how you embody it. Mm. It's the word integrate. So for me, my healing journey, I was listening to the lessons, but I wasn't really integrating the actionable steps to change behaviors from like past coping mechanisms, right? Does that land, Tristan? <laughs> I mean, I relate. Me too, girl. Okay. So the integrative healing arts practitioner diploma, which I love that we offer online because not only have I been an online student, I've taught online. I love our online learning platform. We don't fill alone with the curriculum. What I love about it is it really helps you as an empowered practitioner help your clients your niche market, whoever you're called to work with, to integrate all of this into their life, right? Slowly. Um, so you as the as the integrative healing arts practitioner gets to hold that space um, and choose your path to hold that space, um, which we're gonna go over today. So raise your hand if you have any questions right out of the gate, um, knowing that the on-campus versus online is different. 
So what we are going over today is online specifically. I do want to be clear there. Um, but raise your hand if you have any, any questions at all. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is um, just walk through the curriculum. As you can see, the October 7th start date is listed here because that's the next time it begins. Remind me if I am correct, Tristan, does enrollment close two weeks prior? Right. Okay. So we got a deadline coming up. It's already September. Holy moly. I know. And preparation is key to be able to um, prepare and do all the things, get ready for class. Gina has a question. So I'm going to just let her ask it real quick as we get started. Gina, you can you I'm hear not me? Sure anybody else has the same issue, but my screen went blank. Uh-oh. Anyone else? Can you see my screen, Tristan? I can see it. Yes. Okay. Not sure, Gina. I'm okay. sorry. We we'll talk through it all. So I guess you'll have to be an auditory learner and listeners okay. today. Thank um, you. Yes, definitely. Tristan will explain it very well. All right. But bring the questions. If anyone else has a question, raise your hand and I'll unmute you. Um, so let's walk through the beautiful program that we call the Integrative Healing Arts Practitioner Diploma. I'm going to share, I'm actually going to share our website. Um, because it has everything you need here, including our program sheet that Tristan's going to work walk you all through. Um, so it is a 780 hour diploma online, which is great. We'll talk about um, tuition and financial aid at, near the end. But because it's over 600 hours for those who are looking to make this career, and like Tristan said, profitable. Um, then you can discuss using financial aid to go to school, which is a huge blessing. We're a Title IV funded school, which means um, we can accept that. Awesome. Nationally accredited. So I will hand it over to you, Tristan, really quick, just as an overview. How do you describe the Integrative Healing Arts well, program to people in coming? It's loaded with a wealth of information. So you know, I think this program is for people who, like you mentioned, Becca, earlier, you said something like maybe your pain has brought you to Sweeha. And that has been my experience working in admissions. Like the stories I've heard from people have really highlighted their resiliency in life, right? And mm. I would say most students um, that come through and are interested in really in any program went through something in their own life and they're really in a place where they want to help people going through something similar. So this program, I would say is very entrepreneurial. Um, and so this is for people who are really wanting to start their own practice, but you really don't know where to get started. Or maybe you already have some business experience. Um, I think that is a very strong point. And in admissions here at Sweeha, just as a side note, that's our job is to kind of help you figure that stuff out. Um, and really help you uncover, like, what does that vision look like? Who's your target market? Like, is this the mm -hmm. right program? Is there a different program that could be better? You know, and then also go to get getting into the specialties, which I'll talk about in a second. So this one, I think, is really uh, full of trauma-informed information and also how to apply it. So every single class is not just the information on what something is or how to do it. You will have tons of practical application in every single class. So um, everyone who enrolls into the Integrative Healing Arts Practitioner Program online will take the transpersonal psychology classes and the holistic entrepreneurship classes. And that is one, 160 plus 120 is 280 hours. So 280 mm. hours. So this is really getting into grit. Um, so grit is what it takes to be a successful online student. Everyone who has taken this class, it is always the first class. Thank you, Becca, for blowing that up for Welcome. me. <laughs> Way fixed. Um, so grit for success is one of the first classes. And this really helps us start understanding like the growth mindset versus fixed mindset and understanding time and how do we manage our time and good stress versus bad stress and how do we use the good stress to help us move forward. Um, so this really helps set the trajectory of the, really the career, the educational career at Sweeha sets the tone, I guess. 
Um, and then depending on the specialties you choose, that those are the classes you'll be in. Um, of course, we have our psychology classes, cognitive well-being, social responsibility, the two somatic psychology classes, our aromatherapy class, and then the second grit class is halfway through the program where you reevaluate. So you circle back, look at that information from the beginning, reassess your vision, how has it grown and changed, has your target market grown and changed, and then as you move forward with the rest of the program, how do we, how are we going to make the best of that, essentially? So the psych classes go hand in hand with literally anything and everything. Um, mm -hmm. The information that's learned in these set of classes here are, um, again, trauma-informed and understanding that our nervous system is important in our healing process. Uh, understanding what that looks like for ourselves so that we can better support our clients and understanding that when we get activated, um, some people mm -hmm. use the word triggered, that is the universe's way of saying, hey, here's an opportunity for you to grow. Well, how do we work with that? How do we identify that? How do we put words to that? How do we understand mm -hmm. that? Not only for ourselves, like Becca talked about, it's a, um, gotta be able to identify it with ourselves, but how do we do that with clients? And so that's what these classes are about and how to take that. Both of the specialty options do have coaching with it. So you take this information hand in hand with your coaching and you help your student uh, or your student, you're my student, you help your clients, <laughs> <laughs> you help your <laughs> clients, you know, you meet them where they're at. You're, you learn how to really hold that safe, um, sacred space for those people so that you can learn how to ask those really thought provoking questions to help them move forward in their process instead of stay stuck. Right. Um, so I know that's a lot of information. The somatic psych is one of my favorite classes. That was, uh, you know, I think that's one Same. of the last classes I took. I did the on-campus version, but it was like life-changing. And, you know, it's like, you can be as resource, you can have every single resource in the, in the book or in the library or whatever. But when you're, when you're in the picture, you can't see the frame and more information is always great. So that class is really the bomb.com. That's one of my favorite. I think it makes my top five favorite classes at Sweeha. So um, very exciting Same. that it's part of the program. And this is part of the on-campus version too. So good to go there. Um, so I just want to pause. I know that's a lot of information. Does anybody have any questions on the psych classes or that transpersonal psychology section of classes within the program? Yeah. And it doesn't go in this order just to name that. Like the program oh, yeah. sheet is designed to help our brains comprehend like what specializations and how they're chunked together. Um, but you do flow through the curriculum differently. Like Tristan said, this grit class sets you up for success. It also helps you just set the stage to be accountable through your educational journey, not only education, but your own healing journey as, you know, your stuff comes up and we have to unpack that with love too. Mm -hmm. Um, so just to name that, um, it's beautiful. It's powerful. And I agree with you. It is very profound. Absolutely. Cool. It doesn't look like we have any questions yet, but as they come up, you guys use the Q and a feature, or raise your hand. We'll unmute you. Okay. Sure. Let's roll on next up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I love the business classes. Um, yes. and what I'm excited about the business classes is that it's not just learning the business information of like, Hey, Hey, this is how you start a business. Your assignments yeah. are putting your business together. You are coming up with your business name. You are creating business cards. You're creating your logo. You're getting everything set up, but you're also talking about like what fears come up for you when it mm. comes to starting your business. Let's talk about that. Let's uncover that. Let's dig into that. You have to continue to do your own work when you're in practice. Um, that is essential to continue to work on yourself. Um, and so that's important. You got to be able to take a look at yourself for your business to grow. And really the way that the structure of the business classes are set up in the program, they start about halfway through the program and then to carry you through. And if you follow the structure of the program, take advantage of all of the opportunities in all the classes, not just the business classes, and take advantage of our career services um, offerings, which are also on the website that Becca has pulled up here. Maybe you can mm -hmm. pull that up for us at the end here. But yeah. the career services offer so many things. Becca leads some groups. We have Lean Into Success groups. We have podcasts. We have complimentary business coaching. Like there's so many free, uh, excuse me, complimentary resources <laughs> for our students. 
Um, and students and graduates, this is for life, right? So anything that we can do to support you, if it's in our scope, we're going to help you with that because we truly want you to be successful. So the business classes are steps to put your business together. So yes. How come your picture is not on there, Beck? I feel like you need a picture. I don't know. It's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to email that over. No. <laughs> um, so those classes we just talked about, everybody takes these classes from there, we have specialty choices. Well, hold on. Let me pause. Becca, do you want to okay. say anything else as a success coach? Um, sure. When it comes to business classes or career services? Yes, I would love to. <laughs> um, yes, because, and I like that Tristan names that um, when we're looking at the entrepreneur's journey, just like the healer's journey, um, it's it can be raw. It can feel hard. You can feel alone. That's why in admissions, um, we seek to understand your goal, like looking at the end in mind first to really be um, clear as far as expectation. We can think this journey is going to be just butterflies and rainbows, right? And enjoyable along the way. And we have to be real and accountable. Like when roadblocks come up, how do we handle that? Who do we reach out to? You have a program advisor who's like your go-to person on like, just need to ask the questions. All of your instructors are amazing support along the way um, to help you through any challenges that come up. But for success, and as Tristan said, as you're going through branding, looking at your niche market, so who's sitting in front of you when you're um, holding space, your clients, um, and then defining what you're doing out in the world in a loving and profitable way. Are you a solopreneur? Are you doing it on your own? Are you partnering with somebody? Do you have a referral system? Looking at networking, do you want to have an office, a local office um, where you can rent space? Do you want to be remote? Like it's all those things and tools that you'll integrate into your business along the way. And we don't always know right in the beginning, so let it come, allow it to grow. Like it's like you're birthing your own baby, your business, allow it to grow and evolve um, and try to enjoy the process, right? I'm a person who I, if I don't have all the answers right away. I'm like anxious, like why? I just need to do it all now. <laughs> Slow down, take a deep breath. Your homework will teach you to do that. All the meditations, right? Um, so we can enjoy the journey. That's my two cents. And yeah. I do the workshops, success workshops about marketing, business development, branding, because a lot of us, we need to keep our overhead down out of the beginning. Um, and I teach you how to do that. So cool. Beautiful. So like I said, everybody takes the psych classes. Everybody's going to take the holistic entrepreneur classes. And then from there, we have specialty options. And there's really Yay. two different directions we go. We're going to either go hypnotherapy or we're going to go spiritual coach direction. I know I love hypnotherapy, receiving it. It's um, fantastic. It's definitely helped me in my own healing process. But I very quickly learned it's not my gift. I know Becca is a hypnotherapist. So Becca, do you want to talk more about the hypnotherapy from a practitioner standpoint and student standpoint? I will. I will. Um, even though I don't believe in steroids, I call it life coaching on steroids because I feel like we are accessing the subconscious. So yes, life coaching is very powerful and profound. And I like being able to take my clients in to where um, they're more open and I can ask the subconscious the coaching questions. I can guide them to where they need to go for them to reveal to themselves um, what's coming up or what needs to move or what's there. We don't focus on it. We remove any blockages, any pain, right? Any discomfort without naming that. Um, and we coach the client beforehand to use their own language. So we keep it positive. We keep it forward moving. We don't take them back to a place that's going to, like Tristan said, activate for some use the word trigger. It's very um, forward focused so they can subconsciously replace some old mechanisms with new preferred behaviors, actions, thoughts, words, um, which defines our new realities. 
I did not believe in hypnotherapy before I was at Sweet Hot. I admit this every time I talk about it. After receiving it for myself before I did public speaking to not use one certain word, I was blown away. <laughs> it helped me immensely. And it's so much more than just public speaking or, you know, to quit smoking. There's so much you can do with it. So that was a lot. I love script writing. I love um, that part of it. I don't do past life regressions. Haven't hit that realm yet. But um, yeah, it's all amazing. Yes. What comes from sessions and what people express afterwards is absolutely beautiful. And they it's very transformational. Yes, I think it's yes. Very, it's extremely transformational. Hypnotherapy can really shift some stuff when the when we're ready, right? There's been times we're where I went ready. to receive a hypnotherapy session and like I was like it didn't work and I was like what's wrong with me? And they're like your subconscious just isn't ready yet. And I was like I didn't know yeah. that was a thing. That was pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um so we have the advanced hypnotherapy which advanced for advanced professional hypnotherapy is also a standalone certificate. Um, so that is like also within this program, but we get some additional hypnotherapy courses that aren't part of that standalone, uh, certificate program, which is going to be the NLP narrow linguistic programming. We have applied techniques for post-traumatic growth, energy healing and hypnosis and auriculotherapy, um, for hypnotherapists and auriculotherapy is like reflexology for the ears, there's like emotional release points. You learn seating. Um, if you're not familiar with it, we can, we could dive into it, but I could go down a rabbit hole um, <laughs> with that. So it yeah. looks like destiny has a question. Do you want to answer the past life regression, reg regression question? Well, sure. <laughs> I'll just answer. add my two cents. <laughs> I mean, even though I haven't taken that class, cause I didn't do the advanced, I just did the basic 200 hour hypnotherapy. Yeah. Um, this is about tapping into subconscious. So just looking at potential past lives, the stories that you'll hear, like Linda Bennett telling from people accessing past lives is, you know, they're not even from this plane, right? There are different forms of energy. Um, some people have gone back decades. Some people have gone back like to ancient, ancient times. Um, so they uncover and unlock a lot of old connections and maybe behaviors that come up now are connected to a past life. So it can help explain a lot. Um, just like, you know, dreams, people have dreams and are like, why do I keep dreaming this dream? What is this all about? It helps us to unpack and unlock what it could be connected to. I hope that helps. Would you want to add anything to that, Tristan? I, honestly, I feel like that's perfect because I have received okay. a past life regression before. Oh, yeah. And I feel like, yeah. Um, and cool. it was really, there was a particular question that I had in mind and it, you hit the nail on the head, honestly, is that was like each past life, I went through many of them. I don't remember all, all of what happened, um, mm -hmm. but it was, you know, the same theme in all these past lives. And then here I was in this current life in this body dealing with the same thing. And I was like, okay, how do we overcome that in this time frame? So I, you explained that beautifully. I love that. Thank you. Okay. Yes. So the advanced hypnotherapy, we get life coaching. So life coaching and life coaching goes with anything, coaching, any kind of coaching goes with anything. It is Amen. the foundation. I feel like what we do here at Sweet Hot, literally any and every program has some form of coaching attached to it because it is so incredibly important to learn mm -hmm. how to meet your clients where they're at, not force them forward. Um, and really to help uh, ask, again, ask those thought provoking questions. A lot of times when I'm in coach mode uh, and I ask those questions, a lot of the times the response I get is like, oh, I have to think about that. Or that's a really good question. And it really helps that person pause, dig in, find that answer. And sometimes they need time to really sit through it. Sometimes it brings up a process and then we work through that before the answer comes. So life coaching is that and more and really learning, um, you know, different ways, different tools, different skill sets for different areas of life, you know, of course, oneself, but can I name something real quick? Oh yeah, for me? absolutely. Um, as a coach, what this helped me not do 
mm-hmm. is to project my own stuff on people. Cause yeah. as a human without training, I want to relate, empathize and make it okay. Mm-hmm. I want to like help fix or save pause. That's not for me to do. That's for you to do. I'm going to guide you there. I'm going to hold this safe, what I call sacred space. And I'm not going to make it about me because then we're taking away the opportunity for them to experience the emotions. It's okay to feel and process and ask, like Tristan said, ask the questions to help take them where they need to go in their own languaging, timing ways, Mm -hmm. not mine. So for me, I had to conquer that. And then even in current relationships, so whether it's work, romantic, you know, my kids, I also have to have them not do that for me. I'm like, I, I just need you to listen right now. I don't need you to fix, save, or even comment. Just mm-hmm. nod your head and say, okay, that's valid. So, that's valid. So just relatable. sharing. And I can, I can go about my own way. So for me, coaching did that big time. Yeah. That is kind of reminds me of the toe reading class where you learn how to toe read instead of toe tell. Yeah, toe tell. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love the saying, you can't see the picture if you're in the frame and all of our clients are in the frame. They can't see the big picture. So sometimes it is easy to just say, oh, well, if you just did this, then your life would be better. And that's not what yeah. coaching is about at all. Right. So I know that's a tricky term because you think of a coach who tells you what to do. Yeah. Not that at all. Right. Totally. So that is going to be our first specialty. Then we move on to the second option. And the second option is kind of tricky because it's like a part one, part two. (laughs) It even says option two and three on our website. So we have the modern spirituality. And so everyone who chooses this specialty is going to take 200 hours of the spiritual celebrant classes. And then we have a hundred hours of intuitive coaching, which we'll get into all of these in just a second. And then mindful meditation facilitator. Um, So there are, there is a part one, part two after that, but I want to dig into this. So the 200 hour modern spirituality is really digging into what is your current belief system or how were you raised? um, What does that look like for you? And really um, these classes teach you, of course, we're humans. We relate to all information. So everyone's going to experience this for themselves, but how do we use this with clients? How do we help them uncover what either positive, neutral, or negative belief systems they have around spirituality and what do they want it to look like? How do we build our own path forward, understanding how are we connected to our ancestors, where are we at now, and how do we want to move forward? And so in a nutshell, all of these classes, the grounded spirituality, modern mysticism, exploring the ancestral web of belonging, so on and so forth, is going to teach students how to be there for their clients on their spiritual journey and how to reconnect to their own spirituality in the way that resonates with them. Um, And it does also lead to an optional ordination. So you do not have to become ordained as an ordained celebrant um, or minister. It does add um, a credential, I guess, you know, where you'd be able to perform different types of ceremonies Um, and whatnot. So I'm all about as an entrepreneur, you got to have multiple streams of income. If you do the same thing day in and day out, it burns you out real quick. So when you have multiple uh, offerings that you can, you know, have different streams of income, this definitely helps that because it helps you step out of the box every now and then it's usually not all the time, unless that's your main thing, then that's different, you know, so never had a student. I'm ordained. I just want to name that I did get ordained through the program. It yeah. did. I love having it. Um, I love having it framed and I look at it and it just helps me feel more credible in that space. Um, like I can be taken more seriously when I say that I am ordained. It, it feels good as a professional um, to be that person. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it can help you market that way if you want to lead with that. Like Tristan said, that's totally up to you. Right. Um, each of these classes also have some type of ceremonial aspect to them. Um, and so learning how to bring it into some type of ceremony is going to be essential for your clients. Um, I was going to elaborate on that, but I'll wait till we get to the part one, part two, 
there because mm -hmm. that's, that is the elaboration. So yeah, um, I see we have a hand up. Should, is that a question? Oh, let me look. Hold on. Oh, thank you. Honey, you're so good. I didn't see that. I will <laughs> allow you to speak. You have the mic. If you would like to unmute. Can you figure out the unmute button? I, I pushed the button to help you. Unmute. Can you hear me now? Oh, there you are. Yes. Oh, Hello. Thank you. Hi. I just Hi. wanted to know all these classes. Uh, if we decide to take it slowly and take, uh, you know, a couple of classes at a time to build towards the certificate, is it, is it possible? That is a good question. So, um, yes, and is the answer. Um, so mm -hmm. that's what we do in admissions is help each person figure out what's going to be the best for way forward for you. And so be asking a lot of questions, understand where do you want to start? What do you want this to look like? So the answer is yes. And, um, most of what is in this diploma program that we're talking about is also standalone certificates, certificate of excellence program. So we could start with a certificate of excellence, but you could also take a class here, a class there. Of course, if it has a prereq, you want to take the prereq first, of course. Um, but we can, you know, I'd be happy to chat with you more one on one about what your goals are specifically. But, you know, you don't have to dive headfirst into a diploma program. Um, you know, when you're in this diploma program, you're in two classes at a time every five weeks for about a year and a half. And we're a year round school. So once you start, you're in it till you're done. So mm -hmm. we need to win it. Yeah, in it to win it. Um, but you get breaks. There are breaks. Yeah, there's four different weeks a year for breaks. Um, so if that type of schedule is a little bit, you know, too much for what's on your plate currently, then yeah, absolutely. We could take a look at a certificate program, which is usually one class at a time, or you can just choose one class that you would, or two classes that you'd like to take. And everything is transferable into each other. Um, so oh. if you take a single class, it can go into a certificate. If you take a certificate, that can go into a diploma. Did that help answer your question? Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Very good. And I like how they say it too. When do you start? You can either, what is it? Um, little bite-sized pieces or, or they call it sipping versus, you know, you can take it slow and small or you can go big. Sometimes it comes to funding, but time yeah. and commitment is bottom yeah. line. Timing is a big one for sure too. Um, okay, so we are on intuitive coaching. So we talked about life coaching. So intuitive coaching is life coaching with this intuitive aspect. So you're learning about what is the difference between an intuitive thought and a self-critical thought and mm. how to tell the difference between that and how, to, how do we trust our intuition especially when we're coaching people. Um, you do also learn how to do into more intuitive readings as well. You learn more about angels and guides, ascended masters, um, ancestors. I think they even do power animals. And then the practical mm -hmm. application is those coaching sessions, right? And so they can be the intuitive readings. It can be the intuitive coaching, um, but it's all the life coaching stuff we talked about and then bringing it in, in that intuition. Um, there was one client I had years ago and I was talking with her and I just stopped and I said, I just, I can't stop thinking about bubblicious bubble gum. I don't know why I need to tell you this. And she was like, oh my gosh. And like, she had a process after that, but it was just like, it just kept, and I was like, I just need to say it. So I did, you know, and it just, and that's happened multiple times. That one's the silliest of them all is bubblicious bubble gum. Who I love that. that? <laughs> I so, love that. Yeah. So that is bringing that into intuitive piece into mm -hmm. the coaching. So if you feel like you're in an, a pretty naturally intuitive uh, person, that this would be great for you. Um, the mind like Karen has a question. Oh, real Karen quick. Okay. Yeah. I'll slow my roll. Hi, Karen. You're good. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm currently in the program and my specialty is the hypnotherapy, but some of these other classes sound really interesting. Is there any way that I would be able to just kind of pick and choose and take some of those? Um, so your advisor is Jacqueline is my guess, correct? Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. So you would talk with Jacqueline, if you, there's a class that you, you know, let's say it's soul coaching, and you're like, oh, I would love to take soul coaching. Then you would talk to her about how would that fit in? It wouldn't be part of your current program. It would kind of be like a la carte on the side, but she would be able to support you with that. And then also making sure it's not going to overload your schedule. So if you're already in two classes at a time, adding a third could, that can be a lot sometimes for some people, that'd be a lot for me. Yeah. Um, actually our integrative healing arts practitioner used to be three classes at a time. Do you remember that Becca? That was a long time yes. ago. And it was just, yes. we reduced it to two because it was a lot for our students. So if you feel like you can take that commitment on while you're in your program, absolutely talk to Jacqueline. If you talk to Jacqueline, you're like, yeah, maybe not right now. Then when you're done with your program, you can always come back and take more classes, whether that's a, like, again, a single class here or there or a whole certificate program. We could look at that as well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I like her picture. It's fun. Me too. <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> um, okay. Mindful meditation facilitator. This one in my logic brain, I'm like, well, this is very self-explanatory. It's mindfulness and meditation mm -hmm. smushed together. And how do we facilitate? But we learn about mm -hmm. like, what is mindfulness? What does that actually look like? Um, what I hear and what I understand from this is it is a pretty eye-opening experience of, oh yeah, I know what my being mindful, being mindful. Then you get into this class and you're like, wow. Uh, mm -hmm. not as mindful as I thought I was. Um, so mm -hmm. it's really understanding true mindfulness and then bringing in, uh, the meditation behind that and how, and then learning those different techniques. So there's breath techniques, there's some movement. Um, I don't, I think there might even be a little bit of chanting and whatnot, but they really mm. tie in multiple different things. Like I'm not the person where I can sit down and close my eyes and just meditate. That is not me you know, Same. I have to, I like to be moving. So usually I'll be on a walk or something like that. That's when I can really clear my head and be present, you know, so giving you different, lots of different options. And then you do get practice with facilitating this with people. And you also will learn it for groups as well. If you wanted to do, um, uh, mindful meditation groups, anything to add to that, Becca? No, I think that's perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, just to describe mindfulness for, for one person, for anyone who doesn't really know what it means still yet, maybe yet, that's the word I, for me, applying it is for doing one thing at a time. I'm, I'm like in relationship either with that person, with that food, I'm doing one thing. I'm fully investing my time and energy, which is my most valuable asset. Like if Tristan came to me and said, Hey, I'd like to talk with you. I wouldn't try and be typing and listening to her and talk. I would sit down, look at her and be present with her. For me, that's mindfulness. And I'm trying to teach my son that when he's eating his food, we're not on TikTok, right? We're <laughs> with our food. It's one thing at a time. Yeah. Just oh, this. That's perfect. Yeah. I love that. One thing at a time. I know. I think sometimes in our society, it's like multitask. And that means you're like superwoman. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And it's like, wait a second, br reel it in really, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So for the modern spirituality, we talk about the 200 hour spiritual celebrant, the intuitive coaching and mindful meditation facilitator. So everybody takes that. Then we have like the part one, part two thing. So we have healing botanicals and earth ceremonies. So this is really piggybacks on that 200 hours of a spiritual celebrant. This is bringing in ceremonial peace. Um, so this is really learning how to bring the earth, um, different plants um, or herbs, different essential oils into ceremony. And so it's really bringing in those um, pieces, earthly elements. Um, and I do just side note, this is not herbalism by any stretch of the imagination. You know, this is learning like sage is good to burn for clearing. And this is an ethical source for sage. And this is how to look for that. So just side note. And then it's how do we prepare these herbs, these essential oils? You know, if we're having our ceremony, you know, in the forest or the desert, what, what does that look like? And how do we bring those elements into support ceremony? And something that is close to my heart is that we think of different ceremonies. I think... This is just a story I have. Most people think weddings and funerals. Yes, those are absolutely mm. ceremonies. They happen every day, uh, fortunately and unfortunately. Um, you know, but there's other types of ceremonies. Like there's, I've seen some of our graduates do like moon ceremonies around the the you know lunar 
um, ceremonies, mm -hmm. women's groups, and ceremonies for people who are moving through a transition in their life, you know, whatever that looks like of letting go of the old, bringing in the new. And sometimes, you know, when things happen in life, it's like, oh, okay. You know, uh, here, I'll share something. This just happened. I just paid off all my credit card debt yesterday. This is congratulations. Thank you. I know I got the email and I was like, yes, I've been working on this for like four years. Um, and, and then it's like, good job. You know, it, can yeah. we have a ceremony? For this? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just kidding. I don't need a ceremony, but I'm just saying like things like big things, that's a big thing in my life. So how do we, how could, how could we have a ceremony to either celebrate that or move past that or move into mm -hmm. like when Becca was talking about, um, replacing, you know, old tendencies with new, I think that, I don't know if you said that exact word, but how do we replace that? You know? So, and, and our other option is end of life doula. So, which I hope is very clear end of life, but you know, one of the, mm -hmm. the things that come up for me, I have a dear friend who, uh, tried to start her family many years and had miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when that happened, not only was there a lot of shame involved in her life, but it was just like, you ju you're just expected to move on. Where's, you know, where for her is that ceremony to actually move on into something new, not carry that weight behind her. So that's an example I use sometimes um, as well, mm -hmm. because, you know, for us women, sometimes that's what happens, you know? So those are just examples that I offer, but the ceremonies can be a big piece. And we talked about multiple streams of income earlier. So we have one-on-one -on -one sessions. We can do group sessions. This specialty here adds a whole nother layer of offerings um, that can be monthly, weekly, biannually, what, however we want to do it. So it brings in the earth, herbs, essential oils, how to prepare them, how to incorporate them in our ceremonies. That was a lot. Um, I get really excited. Can you tell? And I'm also um, <laughs> coffee. I know it's like almost one o'clock, but it's oh, I love it. I'm still sipping on mine, but I added. <laughs> Are you? Okay, be, so I'm not alone. To be, Who to else be has fair, coffee? No, to be fair, <laughs> um, so the ceremonial piece is really important, and I think you know, being a student at Sweeha, being a graduate, being a practitioner, I understand when people go through things. It's not just a, oh, okay, and move on with life. Sometimes we need to have some kind of ceremony, no matter how big or small, um, to, to kind of like anoint that, you know, so that they can carry that forward, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Anything that you would add to that, especially in your own practice, Becca? I would add to, because I'm focused on niche markets and purposeful content, content is everything. So when you enter this realm, after you've learned the practices, what I want you to think about is being as specific as possible on who's attending the ceremonies. You like, you can create meetup groups for specific um, ceremonies. Maybe they're grief. It's grief for women. Like Tristan just mentioned for women who've lost children whether it's birth after birth, um, it's be as specific as possible so you can bring that market to you in this space. I call it selling with soul because you can. It's bringing your market to you so that then you can capitalize on this circle, right? This group and then have individual sessions to help people process your life. You use your tools with them along the way. And you can put together um, healing packages for these women, if that's your niche market, um, which can be three months long, six months long, you know, a year long. Maybe it's just as needed. Yeah. So there's also the business strategy behind the ceremony. So that's my nerd piece to add take yeah. off that hat. Thank you. That, I mean, that is so key. Cause I mean, yeah. a, a niche audience really drives, I use this example, it drives everything, but I use this example with people I'm talking about. I'm like, I would have to assume that a monster truck is probably not going to be your logo, you know, like <laughs> the niche market right. really does, you know, if you don't know who your niche market is, um, yeah. you know, a, we can help you figure that out. And B, 
it really drives the content, like you said, like it drives the content, it drives mm-hmm. what you're, what kind of words you're using in your copy and you're on your website, mm-hmm. everything, you know, it's yeah. really important. Very All nice. right. So we have end of life doula. So this is mostly self-explanatory, but this is really helping people work through the experience of death. Um, understanding what that means for you, what's your relationship, what's your belief around that, um, around death, dying, and afterlife, and really understanding how you can support someone else. You know, uh, holding space for someone who is transitioning is, my personal opinion, is probably some of the deepest, most sacred Mm. space that you can hold. It is not for the faint-hearted. Um, and most people who are end of life doulas usually don't have like 15 clients. Like they usually have a couple clients cause they really truly spend that time with those clients. Um, and part of this section of classes is really understanding life review. Um, how does this person who's transitioning, what do they want their legacy to be? That's a big piece of work in this program. Um, and they use that piece, the legacy piece to help the family process after the transition and carrying that legacy forward. Ooh, I got the chills. Someone in here is an end of yes. life doula, I think. Um, <laughs> anyway, oh. <clears throat> and then of course, learning the end of life rituals, ceremony. So this is mostly where the funeral stuff is in here. A little bit of that happens in the spiritual classes as well, but this is really where it lies. Um, And so the legacy piece is important. Um, And of course, processing grief, the person who is um, getting ready to transition does grieve as well. Um, And Mm -hmm. so we have to understand how do we hold that? How do we support that? And then of course, after the transition, how do we support the family? Not only with their grieving, but carrying that legacy forward and carrying that, you know, understanding the life review, not remembering your loved one just before their passing, but they had a, a whole life before right? And so carrying that forward um, to help and support with that grieving process. So this is deep work. Um, If you have questions on what this looks like, absolutely let me know. We did talk about practical application and there is practical application in here. Some of this is you have a practice client who is, you know, like if I was in this program, Becca could be my client. She's clearly not transitioning anytime soon. Um, And she Mm -hmm. could be my practice client. But one of the assignments is working with like a a hospice center or somewhere where you will go and part of your homework and your final project is working with someone who is transitioning and we'll help you with that. We're not going to, Hey, go figure it out. We'll help you with that. And when I say me, I mean, your instructors and your advisor, (laughs) not me directly, Mm -hmm. but we, we will support with getting that real life experience before you finish that section of classes. So Um, that you have that experience and that expertise by the time you're done with the program. I'll just add one thing. When I did interview um, the instructor of the program, he used to be a a nurse. Um, He's now a a very beautiful leader at Suiha. The one thing that kept coming up for everybody who said, you know, I've lost someone. Here's what I wish other people didn't do, like end of life specialists, doulas. Don't bypass the experience. Don't tell them that they're not dying. Mm-hmm. It's important for them to accept it. So don't bypass what they need to feel. Because like I said, <laughs> as a human, you want to make people feel better. It's okay to go through the grieving process and not deny what's happening, but help them embrace and celebrate. So that came up for like everybody who unmuted and raised their hand. They all gave examples of don't take this from me. Yeah. It was beautiful. And that's my chills right there. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Okay. Okay. So that's the program in the classes. I mean, I could talk about Suiha and programs and how it all works (laughs) for days. Days. Where do you want to take it from here, Becca? I don't, I don't don't see any hands up right now. So. No, yeah, no, this is great. Um, I, I want to remind everybody that enrollment is coming up very, very soon, like ASAP. Tristan, while I'm going to talk real quick about financial aid and just show them that, do you want to put in like a main text number where they can call to maybe connect with the coach if they haven't yet? 
you can put that in like the chat um, to everyone there or put it to me and I'll share it. But um, I just want to show, let me pull it up here on our ginormous website where you can go because we put everything out there. We want you to be able to find information easily, quickly. So if you go to the website, of course, you can chat with a coach um, online. If we're offline, we'll get right back to you. You can hover over programs, courses. Um, I think who had this question? Um, Hanit, I think you asked the question if you want to take simple, small classes, bite size. You can look at our class calendar. You can see when certain classes start. You can view all programs, which can be overwhelming in the beginning, but it is very well organized on here. So you can see what's online, what's on campus. Tuition guide is here. So you have all price breakdowns. Everything is laid out for you. We have financial aid. So as we just noted in the beginning, for anyone looking to use financial assistance for their education, this if this is for career purposes, um, you can go to the FAFSA website. If so, if you scroll down a little bit, there's a link here. You'll use our school code 035933 and you will fill out your application. This will let them know that you're looking at going to school here. You can plug in as many schools as you want. So um, that just gives us permission to see your results. We won't be notified that you've done that. So you'll have to get back with your coach to say, hey, I'm accountable, I'm ready. And I filled out my FAF. So what's my next step for you to talk to a financial aid coach and review? But the first step is to actually talk with the coach about you, your purpose, um, your why, right? What you want to do with this education. That's our biggie um, because we want to make sure that we're enrolling you, placing you on the right path to success. Would you like to add to that, Tristan? Um, yes to all of that. But when you do fill out your FAFSA and then it takes a couple of days to get processed and you get an email that says the school will reach out to you. We won't. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I will not get oh, an yes. email that says Julie's FAFSA has been processed or Sarah's FAFSA has been processed. So you have to let us know. Um, and yes, definitely connecting with the coach because we want to hear about your vision. We want to, you know, make sure that we are all about right enrollment. So we want to make sure the program that you're interested in truly is going to give you the tools to make that vision come to life um, and talk about what is the best way forward. Um, who asked the question? Was it Karen that said, can I take a couple classes or was that Hanit? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I now. think it was Hanit. Yes. Can I take a class? Can I take oh, the whole program? There's so many different ways forward. It's like, it's not black and white. It's like the whole rainbow and we got to figure yeah. out which shade of which color. Yeah. And then we head down that direction. So it looks like Katrina has a question. Let me allow you to talk if you want to unmute Katrina. We go. I'm sorry. That's by accident. Oh, you're just that. giving me a high five. Let me have that. Yeah, high five. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Thanks. No problem. Of course. Glad to have you. Um, anyone else have questions for Tristan? I just want to name that um, you'll be using Canvas. Like you paint a picture on Canvas. It's called Canvas where you'll log in to do your homework. And then you also use Yellow Dig for participation points. I can't tell you how much I love all of the online platform, organization, resources, um, interaction with my classmates, instructors. It was all extremely enjoyable, very user-friendly, um, and you have all the support needed along the journey. Um, Hourly-wise, what do you think every week people have to commit to between like 20 to 25 hours worth of homework a week in this program? Yeah. I would say, I mean, it depends, especially in the beginning. It's always more in the beginning, becoming a new student, getting into that groove, finding your way forward. Um, so definitely closer to the 2025 mark, especially in the beginning. Once you find your groove and whatnot, I feel like sometimes, not for everybody, but sometimes some of those hours can get shaved off. I'm dyslexic, so I've got to read everything like three times before I'm like, okay, got mm. it, right? Okay. Um, so it just depends on everybody's tech abilities. 
you know, maybe the class you're taking, everything is brand new information. Maybe the class you're taking, you're very familiar with that content, you know? So I would say uh, 20 is a good number. And then if you're like me, maybe a little extra time. And if you're like me, you don't work better under pressure. You're just a procrastinator. You definitely got to plan ahead. So that's why I tell mm-hmm. myself, like I work better under pressure, but really that's not the truth. So <laughs> um, planning ahead and really making sure that you are giving yourself enough time to get the work done to turn your assignments in on time and your final projects in on time. That's important. Yes. For me, it is letting my loved ones know what support I'm going to need because I can get resentful and frustrated because I think they can read my minds and know what I'm doing, but they don't. <laughs> so I have to go, oh, wait, okay, here's here's the plan, you guys. Is everyone on board with this? Here's what I'm going to need in a loving way before I get unloving. And then I'm (laughs) back in the hypnotherapy chair. (laughs) Just saying, I just got to call myself out to stay accountable and honest. Um, That's what helps heal me one day at a time. So um, I went ahead. Thank you, Tristan. She put the email, text line, everything there. You can call, you can chat on the website to get started. I also put it on Facebook. So for whoever's watching this or will rewatch this, um, you have everything you need there. We did this in just a minute under an hour. Hooray. We did it. (laughs) Did it. Any questions, anyone? Great. Save those for your coach because they can tailor it more towards you and what the next step is right after this. So. Thank you, Tristan, as always, oh, for this mindful you, time you, and you. space. How fun. We work together so well now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of the collaboration and learning, right? Yes. All right. I love you, sister. And thank you all for being day. here. Thank you, thank Have you, a blessed you. and beautiful day. We'll see y'all in class soon. Thank right. you. Bye. Bye.